On my right side right here, we have the 2007 Air Jordan 1 Mid from the Old Love New Love pack. And on my left side right here, we have the 2022 Air Jordan 1 Mid from just current time. Now, when it comes to these two shoes, I know they might look very similar because they look like Jordan 1s and maybe the color blocking is a little bit different. But trust me when I tell you, there are a lot of differences when it comes to these two sneakers based off the old ones and the new ones. So what we're gonna do first is start from the bottom of the sneakers and work our way up, talk about all the similarities and differences. And I'm gonna show you guys some on foot looks of both of these two sneakers because there's definitely a lot of differences between these two shoes that you may just not have noted. Looking at the outsoles right here, you have your classic Air Jordan 1 bottoms. Now, obviously I've worn these a couple times, but for the most part, everything looks pretty much identical from 2007 to 2022. Now we know this is not the exact same as the 1985 version, which we could talk about in a different video, but when it comes to modern day retros, this is typically what you get when it comes to the Jordan 1 outsole. Now looking at the midsoles right here, wrapping up, everything is pretty much identical as well right here obviously this one has a little bit more age so it might be yellowing a little bit but overall when it comes to the actual composition of the shoe everything is the same now I'm not hundred percent sure when it comes to the air unit on the inside of the sneaker if it's the shape or if anything has changed over the years but overall when it comes to the exterior part of the sneaker it all looks the same now taking it to the upper this is definitely gonna be a part where you start to see some similarities and differences between the two shoes now starting with the toe box of these two shoes right here you can see there's a little bit difference when it comes to the size of the perforated dots on the leather right here and then the actual feel of the leather on this upper on these feels a lot more cheap a lot more plasticky a lot more firm when it comes to that aspect of the shoe and on these ones in particular it has a smoother finish to it but at the same time, it does feel a lot thicker and the shoe actually feels a lot better on foot, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video as well. Now going to the side panels, the swoosh and the back end of the shoe, everything does look very similar, but I'm telling you right now, the actual shape and the sizing and proportions of the shoe are just slightly different. Hopefully in these photos, you guys can see the differences between the heights and the cuts of the different materials. But when you're looking at the red area right here on the back end around the heel or the black area here on the back end on the new pair, you can definitely tell that it's a lot higher on the an older pair compared to the newer pair. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA show. Hey. Another thing to notice as well, the Air Jordan Wings logo. On the older pairs, the Wings logo was just a little bit smaller on them, and you can tell they've gotten a lot more prominent and a lot bigger as well when it comes to the presentation of the logo on the side of the foot, which makes sense when it comes to the branding standpoint. And honestly, I feel like the bigger Wings logo looks a little bit better as well. Now for these two shoes in particular, when it comes to the cuts of the leathers, you can see that they rolled over the edges on every single line, and you can't actually see the raw cuts for any of the lines on the shoes. Now, when you look at a different shoe like an Air Jordan 1 or something like that, classic more like the Breads or the Chicago's or you name it, you can see that those aren't rolled over on the edges and they have more of a raw cut finish to them. But again, that's a whole different type of comparison. But the reason why I'm bringing that up as well is so you guys can see that these do have a similarity when it comes to that aspect in the overall cut and finish of the shoes. Even though the quality of materials isn't as nice on this pair, they still have similar presentation. Now going to the tongue and the laces, this is something that is huge for me and this is one of the big reasons why I don't like the 2022 version also not to mention like I said the materials and everything but the just overall functionality of the tongue so I'm gonna show you guys some on foot shots real quick and then we're gonna come back and I'll explain to you guys in a second So as you can see right there, yes, the shoe looks fine on foot, but for me and my preference and how I like it, I feel like the tongue is just way too large. I feel like it sticks up too high and it doesn't feel as comfortable. It's a lot more stiff and I don't like that functionality of the sneaker, especially if I'm wearing the shoes with shorts. And I mean, yeah, you could cover it up with pants, but I'm gonna show you guys a quick look with this pair of the older pair on foot and how they kind of just flow and fit a little bit better. So as you can see right there, the tongue is a lot lower when it comes to the overall fit on the foot. And you can see right here, this mesh is a lot more soft, it's a lot more flexible, and then the overall length of the tongue isn't as long. And for me, I always thought that was quite interesting because when you think of retro Jordan 1 lows or retro mids, 
They always have a longer tongue. It's like this tongue was supposed to be on a high, yet they kept that same length. And I'm like, if you're making a mid and you're cutting price and everything, why wouldn't you save more material and make the tongue a little bit lower as well? I don't know, it just only would make sense in my mind, but everybody has their preferences. The brand has decided what they wanna do and what they wanna create. But again, that's a huge difference between these two shoes. It's something that's always kind of kept me away from wearing this pair in particular, simply because the tongue is just so big, it's out there. And it's like, I like that more subtle look when it comes to the older pairs like this. Now, besides from that aspect, when it comes to the branding on the two shoes, it looks like the patch with the Air Jordan is a little bit bigger on the newer version compared to the older version. But overall, everything is gonna be similar when it comes to presentation. You got your Jumpman on the top with the Air branding just below on both feet. Now, when it comes to the sock liners and the ankle configurations and the materials that they use, there's gonna be a big difference on this as well. On the 2007 pair, you can see it's a lot thicker and you can push it and it has a lot more plush of a feel to it. And it just gives you, again, like more of a snug and better just comfortable feeling when you're rocking the shoe. Now, when you look at the 2022 pair, you can see I push it, it's pretty stiff, it's very thin. There's not too much padding in there. And it's overall just kind of feels a little bit cheaper. It doesn't feel as nice. So when you see the two shoes on foot as well, you can see there's definitely a big difference when it comes to the overall look, when it comes to the ankle area and the tongue area right there. Some people have their preferences. They may want that skinnier feel. And some people may say, this is too thick. It looks more kind of like a SB vibe. I get that everybody has has their preferences. I'm just kind of telling you the differences between the two if you didn't know about those as well. Now, next thing we need to talk about is the back end of these two shoes right here because I'm telling you right now, there is a huge difference. As you can see right here, back in 2007, 2008, 2009, you name it, back in that time, they were slapping the Jumpman logo on the back end of the heels of all the Air Jordan 1s and we saw it on the tongues and then we saw the slow rollout of the Nike Air being integrated, you know, around 10 years ago. As we saw more Air Jordan 1 OG highs get integrated into the game, we then saw the mids change, and this is what we started to get. But when they did that change, they eliminated the Jumpman on the back end, and now we started to see more of this style when it comes to the Air Jordan 1 mids. And honestly, I feel like a lot more people appreciate it with just the clear back end right here compared to the Jumpman. Now, this is something that I had known from growing up, rocking these in high school, and just remembering those times and seeing that era. But I think it's also a great representation of different eras of sneakers. So some people love it, some people hate it, some people appreciate it. I'm kind of in the middle of appreciating both when it comes to them kind of just identifying the different eras and genres of sneakers. But either way, that's something that's definitely to notice when it comes to these two shoes, because some people even see the Jumpman on the back and they think people's pairs of shoes are fake because they didn't know that the mids back in the day had Jumpmans on the back. So hopefully that helps you guys get a better understanding of that as well. Another thing to notice when it comes to the heel of these two sneakers is the actual just shape and configuration and where they decided to place the leather pieces like I was talking about earlier with the higher cuts and the different placements and the actual rectangular shape with the squares on the back end of the foot right here and then where they place the swoosh and everything like that. So when you look at the 2007 pair, you can see it's a lot more, I guess it's higher when it comes to the red leather when you typically see that first patch. And then on here, when it looks to the original cap that goes around the back end, it's a little bit lower and a lot wider when it comes to that rectangle on the back end right here feels a lot more kind of compressed uh, if that's the word you want to use on that part right there now when it comes to the height of these two shoes it's very very similar when it comes to the heights you can see there's definitely more of a curve right here when it comes to the 2007 pair and it's more of a straight line going up right here and a little bit higher at the top end of the lace holes on the new 2022 mid so that's also something to take notice as well the mids are just slightly higher than the mids from back in the day yet these are definitely not as high as the og highs now there are a lot of things that i could have mentioned when it comes to the different type of mids that have came out now and the different type of mids from back in the day and the se's and you name it the different versions so if you guys want to see any other comparisons of different models or explained versions of the Air Jordan 1 mid and why Jordan wore the Air Jordan 1 mid from back in the day. So I hope this video was helpful. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Are you a fan of the older mids or are you a fan of the newer mids? Me personally, I'm still rocking with the older mids. There are some things I appreciate about the newer mids, but at the end of the day, gotta rock with the older ones.
Yo, before you go, I just launched my Sneakerhead Academy where we got everything on the inside. I teach you all the stuff that I learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers, scaling, real estate, you name it. We talk about all of it in there. And there's an eight week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways. I give away shoes literally way too much, honestly. But either way, I'll see you guys on the inside. Hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy. And I'll see you guys over there.